my dear students today we will learn about the structure of skeletal muscle study of muscles is called myology or sarcology study of muscle movement is called kinesthesiology the intelligence of muscle movement is called kinesthetic intelligence muscles are responsible for mobility that is movement and also maintaining the posture of the body this is the main purpose of musculoskeletal system there are three types of muscles in the body namely striated muscles smooth muscles and cardiac muscles in this class let us try to understand the physical and the chemical nature of skeletal muscle or striated muscle nearly 40 to 50% of the body weight is made up of muscle tissue and this muscle is mesodermal in origin each muscle fascicle is made up of many muscle fibers and in this muscle fiber there is one protein called collagen collagen is the most abundant protein that is present in the human body this is also called aging protein because with the age the synthesis of collagen is reduced this collagen is also present in tendons along with the muscles now let us examine the nature of skeletal muscle skeletal muscle like any other muscle exhibits excitability contractility and relaxation and these skeletal muscles are called so because they are attached to the bones these are also called striated muscles skeletal muscles are under the control of the organisms hence these are also called voluntary muscles this skeletal muscle if you observe the structure of the muscle fiber each muscle fiber is covered or bordered by plasma membrane and the plasma membrane of the muscle fiber is called sarcolemma below the sarcolemma there is a multi nucleated condition in the skeletal muscle that means the skeletal muscle contains multi nuclei many nuclei this multi nucleated condition if it is found in animal cell it is called syncytium whereas if the same multi nucleated condition if it is found in plant cell it is called cnocyte thus skeletal muscle cell forms a syncytial structure because the skeletal muscle fiber is uh, formed by the fusion of many embryonic uni nucleated myoblasts inside the muscle fiber there is a protoplasm and this is called sarcoplasm and in this sarcoplasm there are uh, certain floating cell organelles like endoplasmic reticulum mitochondria etc mitochondria in the muscle are responsible for providing energy because we know that uh, mitochondria are the power houses of any cell coming to the endoplasmic reticulum of the muscle fiber the endoplasmic reticulum that is found in the muscle is sarcoplasmic reticulum and it belongs to smooth type that means sarcoplasmic reticulum of the muscle cell is smooth endoplasmic reticulum which is made up of many system name 
and especially the terminal cisterni are loaded with calcium ions these calcium ions are responsible for the muscle contraction that means the chemical ions that are required for the contraction of the muscles are ca plus plus ions that means calcium ions and there are many proteins in the muscle fiber these are called contractile proteins and this contractile proteins are divided into structural proteins and the regulatory proteins there are two types of structural proteins inside the muscle especially in the skeletal muscle namely actin and myosin this actin and myosin structural proteins are arranged one after another alternately actin is a thin filament whereas myosin is a thick filament actin has low molecular weight myosin has heavy molecular weight actin is light myosin is dark and because of the alternate arrangement of thin light actin filaments with uh, thick dark myosin filaments the skeletal muscle appears to be banded in its nature hence because of these striations that are formed by the alternate arrangement of actin and myosin these muscles are also called striated muscles actin filaments and myosin filaments they form light and dark zones within the striated muscle the light zone is called isotropic band this is also called i band anisotropic band is called dark band in isotropic band there is a central elastic line called z line this is also called crossus membrane this is also called dobis line this is called z line because of its appearance during the preparation of micrographs under the microscope when we make the sections it appears in the form of a z while preparing those micrographs all the actin filaments they are anchored to z line that means i band contains only actin filaments and this actin filaments orient from z line towards anisotropic band but isotropic band that is i band contains only actin filaments no doubt they may radiate into the darker band but isotropic band contains only actin filaments like that in the dark band there is a central membrane called m line to which thick myosin filaments are anchored and this thick myosin filaments that are uh, anchored to the m line they start to traveling to the periphery of the a band where they overlap with actin filaments which are already present there but if you compare the central portion of the anisotropic band with the peripheral portion the central portion contains only myosin filaments and it appears less darker when compared to the periphery where there are both actin and myosin filaments the central portion of the a band this central portion of the anisotropic band which contains only myosin filaments is called h jo or h disc or hansen's disc the periphery of the anisotropic band contains both actin and myosin filaments 
like that let me repeat the isotropic band contains only actin filaments henson's disc of the anisotropic band contains only myosin filaments whereas the periphery of anisotropic band contains both actin and myosin filaments and the space between two z lines is called sarcomere and all the chemical and physical changes during muscle contraction occur in between these two z lines occur in this zone and this zone is called sarcomere and this is nothing but the structural and functional unit of the muscle contraction now let us examine the nature of contractile proteins majorly there are four types of proteins in the muscle namely actin myosin tropomyosin and troponin actin and myosin are called structural proteins whereas tropomyosin and troponin are called regulatory proteins because they are responsible for covering and uncovering the active sites on the actin this tropomyosin and troponin are responsible for masking and unmasking of the active sites of the actin filaments hence they are called regulatory proteins actin is made up of two molecules of filamentous actin which is called f actin they wound with each other with a helical format and each actin is made up of a monomer unit called z actin it is nothing but globular actin and running parallel to the actin there are filamentous structures called tropomyosin these tropomyosin proteins are responsible for stabilizing the active sites of the actin actin contains various active sites which bind with the myosin protein but in the absence of stimulus these active sites are covered by tropomyosin under the cooperation of troponin troponin is divided into three types namely t and t that is attached to tropomyosin tni that inhibits the actin from interacting with myosin heads another one is tnc that binds to calcium ions in the absence of calcium ions the tropomyosin gets stabilized over the active sites of the actin but whenever the calcium ions are released under the stimulus they bind to tnc now under this function of calcium ions that means in the presence of calcium ions both the troponin and the tropomyosin are dragged away from the active sites of actin filaments now the active sites of actin filaments are ready to bind with myosin myosin is thicker actin is thinner actin is lighter myosin is heavier myosin is a motile protein it is made up of uh, monomer units called uh, miromyosin each myosin contains head region neck region and tail region head region is made up of heavy miromyosin whereas the tail region is made up of light miromyosin neck connects head region with tail region head contains two parts two reactive parts one reactive part contains atp and another reactive part combines with active site of the actin because the myosin contains atp this is called a motile protein because 
unless myosin is there, unless it forms a cross bridge with the actin filament, muscle movement doesn't occur. And there is one system called triad system in the muscle. The sarcolemma forms transverse tubule and on both the sides of the transverse tubule, terminal cisternae of sarcoplasmic reticulum get flanked. That means the transverse tubule along with this terminal cisternae form the triad system. This is about the structural aspect of the skeletal muscle. Apart from this, each muscle cell contains certain chemicals, namely glucose, glycogen, ATP, creatine phosphate, inorganic phosphate, myoglobin. Myoglobin is the hemoglobin that is present inside the muscle. The affinity of myoglobin for oxygen is more than the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. Now let me sum up. Study of muscles is called myology or sarcology. Study of muscle movement is called kinesthesiology. 40 to 50 percent of the weight of the body is made up of muscles. There are three types of muscles, namely skeletal muscles, smooth muscles and cardiac muscles. Skeletal muscles are attached to the bones. These are also called striped muscles. These are voluntary muscles. And uh, muscle contains uh, structural and regulatory proteins. Actin and myosin are called structural proteins. And uh, tropomyosin and troponin are called uh, regulatory proteins. Actin contains active sites that are normally masked by tropomyosin and troponin. And the ions that are required for uh, muscle contraction are calcium ions. Thank you very much.